These tuna croquettes are crispy like they've been fried, but guess what? They're not. These little guys are baked. We're starting with a good glug of olive oil in a large pan over medium heat. To that, we're adding about half a red onion that's finely diced, then saute these until slightly translucent. Also, side note, sauteing onions might be one of my all-time favorite smells. And it just gets better when you add garlic, two cloves to be exact, and make sure that they're finely minced or passed through a garlic press. Then once the garlic is mixed in and smelling scrumptious, add one finely diced tomato. Just cook this until the juice is released, then add all-purpose flour. When you mix it together, it will look clumpy, but don't worry, you haven't messed up. Just cook for about 2-3 to three minutes to cook out the flour flavor, then pour in 1 cup of cold milk and stir. I recommend switching to a whisk to help break up the clumps, and I promise they will break up if you whisk well. It's going to get quite thick and creamy now, so add a bit more milk, then season with a few pinches of salt and pepper. Keep whisking until the milk is all incorporated and the mixture has thickened slightly. Don't worry, the lumps you see here are the tomatoes and onions. I know it can be confusing, but all the flowers combine now, so transfer the mixture to a large bowl. And these wouldn't be tuna croquettes without tuna, so add two cans of that, but make sure you drain it first. Also add one finely diced jalapeno with the seeds removed, or not if you like it spicy. We also added some fresh parsley, lime zest, and juice, plus more salt and pepper to taste. From there, it's just a matter of mixing everything together. This is definitely too mushy to handle right now, so it needs to chill in the fridge for at least three hours or overnight. Now that it's firmer, it's much easier to handle and you can use clean, slightly damp hands to form the mixture into balls roughly the same size as a golf ball. Place the formed tuna balls on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, then freeze for 30 minutes so they can get super firm. In the meantime, prepare the breading by combining 2 cups of panko breadcrumbs with more salt and pepper, a little paprika or paprika, however you want to pronounce it, and about 3 tablespoons of olive oil. After that's all combined and your tuna has firmed up, we can start breading. This is a bit of a process, so buckle up. Start by dipping the tuna ball in some flour. Roll it around and dust off the excess, then we need to wet it. So dip it in a separate bowl with 2 beaten eggs. To avoid too much mess, use a fork to roll the tuna ball in the egg, then transfer to the breading we prepared before. Once it's in the breading, use your hands to sprinkle breadcrumbs over the ball so it's less sticky, and you can then roll it around fully. But wait, there's more! That's right, we're doing a double breading, so it's back to the eggs for another dunk, then into the breadcrumbs again. We don't want these to explode in the oven, so a double breading is pretty necessary. Also, more breading is not a bad thing if you ask me. Place the breaded croquettes on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, then bake at 425 Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes or until golden brown. If you enjoyed this video, click on one of these, and while you're here, subscribe for more amazing recipes.